Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to two real ones with John Bernthal. The video is titled John Bernthal meets ex-marine who wanted to blow up a mosque before he converted to Islam. Guys, I already reacted to this conversion story of Richard McKinley. That being said, on my last reaction video, he didn't have this majestic beard. Mashallah. With no further ado, let's have a look. And you're back now. You, you, you're feeling abandoned. You're feeling lost. You're still now sort of at the prime mentally with this, with this hatred, this dehumanization. Um, now, w w was there already, was there uh, um, a an influx of uh, Muslim refugees or people coming coming into Muncie is that or, or was there always a community there well yeah see that's the thing there always was a community there uh, they never stood out to me really uh, and 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 it, with Muncie you know it had been a mailing address for many years really more than anything because I had broken time I had two years between the Marine Corps and the Army uh, where I tried to be a civilian that was a bad idea I'm lucky I made it out alive. Mm. But I went I joined the army and and I had already came to Muncie. I came to Muncie to fight. I was trying to make it as a kickboxer. Mm. And then I slowly mm. got into I the cage. Know and you know, because of drinking and womanizing, that never panned out. I ruined myself, you know. I could have I was good. I Man, I don't know if I was UFC good, but I was good. I get it. <laughs> you know. And uh but yeah, so I I killed myself that way. I lost that window. So I went into the army. And uh, they uh, uh, they were more than happy to take me in. Took me in, and you know they was like I got you know hooked up with a, a, a really high speed unit, and you know became an operator again. And man, it was off to the races. Did some great things, man. Some fun things. So, you know, it was hunting down war criminals in Bosnia in '04, right, and Afghanistan and in Iraq, and 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 oh my gosh, it was just it was. It was incredible but you know now it, it's all gone man and it's like hey i have nothing you know i i got money at, at the at the time i had plenty of money actually you know and and so i didn't really need to do anything so i have all this time to think now about all these people who ruined my life ruined my destiny stole it from me bam i got some muslims right here i can take care of them do one last thing for my country make that stand that we are not going to take it anymore i like this podcast format much better than the previous interview it's much more real so i took my time i devised a plan it's over the course of probably a couple years you know oh. uh, what was the plan to to um uh, put a bomb together simple bomb and uh do my best to level the islamic center when I first looked at <laughs> but here it, they're going to say the most are the, the terrorists that bomb everybody. Eh? They didn't have the location they have now. They were actually in a house that was right off of campus and was in a residential area. Wow. So I slowly kept kept with the process of putting a bomb together, but waited because I didn't like that idea because there was too much. There was too many Americans around. Right. I didn't really want to hurt the Americans. Right. <laughs> Not that almost everybody inside the Islamic Center was actually an American. American yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I backed off a little bit. Then they moved. And they kind of got this out-of-the-way building. You know, it's, it was still close to some other, and I knew there would be some, some res residual harm that was going to happen. But I think it would be minimal. I, 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 I tried my best to, as best I could, and the knowledge I had about explosives to make this so it had as little impact on these other people as possible and it just went into motion full gear and i was ready to just all i had to do was my 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 plan was on a thursday night late night i had a place for it i already did that recon and i was just going to set it down and wait for them to have their service the next day in the afternoon sit across over at that bank at friday prayer in. 
Wow, man. Do you remember exactly where you were when you got that impulse, when you got that idea? Do you remember oh how gosh. it started? I mean, was there a process that went from sort of an idea into I'm actually going to execute this? And Honestly, I don't think so. I think it was just, this is what I'm doing. I mean, you know, okay. Ah, good idea. Let's do this. You know, kind of like when you when you're at the supermarket and you and you're checking out and you see, oh man, I really want that Twix bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, no and, big deal. It was that it. simple. Yeah, yeah. We're, it, it, and that's that's it didn't what, mean anything to him. A lot of my shame comes into into being. It's 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 not the act itself. It's it's what went behind it that made it so dis. Yeah, this is what Easy. I do. You know? Yeah. yeah. Why did you I was never in the army, so therefore I had no military training. But I remember clearly when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, so this is already a long time ago, I was dreaming about bombing mosques myself. It's really no joke. I had those thoughts as a teenager. Looking at the mosques in Macedonia, I thought they are foreign entities trying to take over our country. I didn't know that the Adan was in Arabic. I thought it's an Albanian. I really believe the Albanians set up their bases. I didn't even associate God with those mosques. And now they're going to take over our country. Everybody will talk Albanian and they're going to get rid of us. They want to kill us. So for me, the only option was to bomb all those mosques. This was what I perceived as the enemy. Of course, such thoughts, such reactions come from a deep state of ignorance and arrogance. Get them as the cause of, of you being in the situation that you were in. Exactly. I think it just had to do with my own personal experience with being overseas and, and, and fighting these Muslims, right? Uh, having them try to kill me, you know? Um, I didn't even add that. It just turned me against the whole the whole group it's like yeah so one tries to kill me they all want to kill me you know is that that mindset mm -hmm. so it, it, it's basically it, it's the basic premise of how prejudice builds right of course okay, you know yeah. we, we see the actions of this one person because of the color of skin or where they come from all they're all like that right um and it it just it just kept building just kept building and they're all evil every one of them even the babies <laughs> Did you have experiences overseas where you saw you're fighting alongside of, of Muslims or you saw something that you respect or you did you have any experience before what we're going to eventually get to? You saw beauty w w within within the, 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 the Muslim faith? Not the faith necessarily. Or the people? Um, you should tell the story about yeah, that woman. That's what I'm right. gonna do. Yeah, yeah, that's why I looked at you first. <laughs> he don't. He normally does not like me to tell the story, but it's my explanation on where my hatred. Was. Please, yeah, no, I think it's important in Bosnia. So our main mission was there to go get uh, war criminals, put them, hold on to them until somebody came and got them and transported them to the Hague. Which right? war criminals? Okay, the Serbians. So like Milosevic, Karadzic, and all those guys. Right. right. We never did get those. We actually ended up capturing a couple Al Qaeda guys. Because uh, Bosnia happened at, I don't know if it still is, but it was an Al-Qaeda training ground. A lot hmm. of people didn't even know that. Yeah, it was wow. hidden away. Uh, so anyway, uh, I had this interpreter. But since 24-7, we're not hunting down war criminals. You know, we're, we have other stuff we need to do. So my, uh, m my colonel decided, hey, Mac, he said, you're a chariz or chariz charismatic guy. I'm going to send you on some PR duty. You're going you're gonna to give radio interviews. I was like, all right. <laughs> so I'd go to these radio stations in Bosnia. Yeah. Well, I had to have an interpreter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a, it was a female, 20-something, right, Bosnian. Um, and she, she, she ended up being actually my, my team's interpreter. And um, sweet girl, very pretty, um, but very, very European. And... When I say that, it's not. It, it, it sounds like I'm being judgy, and I'm really trying not to. I'm just trying to put it into a frame of mind where a lot of your European Muslims are not as orthodox as, say, like Afghan Muslims. Sure, you know, or 
I can totally relate, man. Bosnians are basically my ethnic group. I know nowadays nationalists don't want to hear that, but Bosnians, Serbians, Croatians, Bulgarians, Macedonians, it is essentially one people. Of course, you have slight differences, but it's like saying there is a slight difference between Dutch people and German people. Essentially, they stem from the same ethnic group. Moreover, they, of course, have the same cultural background, especially the Slavs. And therefore, yes, you do have Muslim Slavs, such as the Bosnians, but generally speaking, there is no big difference. And therefore, for the biased mind, thinking about Muslim, you think about an Arab, you think about an Afghan, you think about a Pakistani, you're not thinking about a European Slav being a Muslim. And this is why I'm sure he could relate to them much easier. Or, or Saudi Muslims or something like that. They're, they're a lot exactly. more just carefree, okay, about things. Um, and that is in no way a judgment. It's just trying to give an explanation Understood. you have to generalize you know, she didn't wear her job uh she you know she went out she dated guys and you know her family was more orthodox than she was we mm -hmm. actually she took her shook us she took my team to her house and we met her family wonderful people wonderful people now i'm saying this remember that and this girl we had so much respect for her she took care of us mm. you know and we took care of her to 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 put it into a frame of mind within Bosnia. And this is what caused such a problem for when they had the civil war and stuff, where there's Serbian villages within Bosnia. Yep. Okay. And we went into one of the Serbian villages to try to get some information. I sat down and met with the police chief there, and my interpreter's here. He's Serbian. She's Bosnian. Of course, I didn't know exactly what they were saying, but his tone and her reaction told me that he was not being very nice. Right, something was up. I got up, pulled out my M4, pulled it up. So if you ain't got nothing nice to say, you shut the hell up. Mm -hmm. Just you like that. Tell that and then because she, yeah. yeah, because I was like, she's with me. She's with you. Yeah. Right? Now I don't. I I like her, but I don't like. I hate her. Right, but she's <laughs> with me. I'm taking care of her. Okay. Plus, I know without her, I'm probably not going to get out of town. <laughs> so, so, and my friends asked me, we were sitting in the chow hall one day, and some friends I was with, we were sitting there eating, and uh, we started talking about how much I hated Muslims, because these are part of the group that's like, dude, you need chill. They said, well, what about Sarah, man? You like Sarah? I said, dude, I do, man. She's great. I said, man, I, I do just about anything for her, but there's going to come a time when she got to go. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean? She's Muslim, dude. She got to go. I said, but because I do like her and I do respect her, I said, I hope I'm the one that's there to do it wow. because I'll just put a nine to the base of her skull and she'll go quick and painless. Wow. But she's still got to go. <laughs> wow. That's hatred. And he didn't even know why. I mean, why. That, that, you, you, you can't get any better explanation on the hatred that I felt in that way. Yeah. To actually it's have a desire to, to take the life of someone that I like. Mm. you know that's been good to me that's hatred sure I, I just I wrestle with that sometimes because that's evil man yeah. that, that's that's the foundation of evil and I, I can't I, I don't know I, I don't know um this moderator seems familiar. Is he an actor? I don't know who he is. Anyway, where were we at? Where were all right guys and this is already it for today's video unfortunately cuts off there i would have loved to see the whole interview nevertheless this is where it ends and it shows clearly a side that we didn't see in the first interview with richard it put into perspective how much hate he had for the muslims but it was irrational hate of course what was it founded upon because he was fighting some muslims when he was in bosnia he was clearly persecuting the Serbs which are the Christians. So he wasn't even in Bosnia to fight Muslims. There you can see how irrational his hatred was. And this is why I believe that hate comes directly from the devil. In many instances, it's not rational. Matter of fact, when you try to analyze, try to understand, you won't even find an answer for it. As he just said, I like her, so I should probably shoot her. It's absolutely abhorrent, but coming from the Balkan, I can relate to that. We grow up 
with that hatred on both sides. The Albanians are taught that we are the enemies. We are being taught that the Albanians are the enemies. And like that, you're fueling the fire. It is an absolute mess, of course. Ultimately, divide and conquer. I said it multiple times before. To me personally, it's absolutely frustrating. Because if I look at those Slavic countries, those South Slavic countries, I see one people. That is me personally. Of course, the Yugoslavian project has failed utterly. But nevertheless, if I compare it to Germany or to France, just geographically, size-wise, you will see that we are, of course, one people. Unfortunately, there are so many different narratives, different religions, and like that, we are separated. Ultimately, it is always us against them. And this is why it took me so long to even consider looking into Islam. To this very day, I'm letting go of those biases. Somewhere back in my mind, it is still there. Hmm, it is their religion, not ours. And this is why, thank God, I was able to travel the world. Whilst traveling the world, I saw, no, it's not just their religion. Look at this. Indonesian people are Muslim. Thai people people are Muslim, Malaysian people are Muslim. Moreover, even Russian people or Balkan Slavs are Muslim. Now you see Islam spreading everywhere, especially in the past year. It was absolutely mind-blowing to see how many new reverts we had. So for me, it has been a slow unwinding of all of those false biases to finally realize, no, it's not an ethnicity. No, it's not their religion. Islam truly came for everyone. Alright guys, but this is it for today's video. If you like it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.